Martha, are we ready? Uh, <laughs> anyway, her, her man was cheating and she went on the one eggs and uh, she was even with trained, I guess she was the first cougar. She would even train someone young. Okay, I want to thank, well, Brian, I want to thank him for basically single-handedly providing us with outstanding speakers. And then I have to say, since he's here, I can thank Bill, because he brought a lot of great speakers also. And the reason I'm excited, in, 19, in 2012, in the pilot program, this is the last, the last piece <laughs> of the puzzle. We said we would broadcast our meetings, but it took the pandemic for us to actually reach the uh, final pinnacle of the pilot program. So we're there now. Diane. Thank you, past president, immediate past president, and president of record, and everything else, for the leadership you provided during this makeup pandemic year. You're keeping us together. I don't know how you did it. I don't know anyone who's gone back twice, but thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ed. I don't know if anyone else will after this either, but. <laughs> and thank you yourself, thank John. I want to thank past president and peace chair, Marsha Hunt, for hosting the Zoom meeting and providing time, expertise, and making sure our meetings run smoothly. And that's her with her Emmy that she won. Pretty good job. Thank you. I want to thank you because she's hosting. I was finally able to get my, my uh, network up that I haven't had up since uh, 2010. And I'm happy and ready to go to work again. And now, Bill, the, why we're all here today, because <laughs> we're Bruins and we love good things and we love winners. And Kelly definitely has been a winner as a player and, you know, as a coach. It's all yours, Bill. Well, I'm really happy that I'm able to introduce Kelly to this meeting. I mean, she is a very special, special Bruin. And uh, the UCLA championship coach, um, last year she won our 13th national championship for the softball team. She got 600 wins. She has all American players all over the place. And last year, her national MVP pitcher, Rachel Garcetti, if anybody saw her, was absolutely fantastic. Uh, we are very, very fortunate to have Kelly here to talk to us. So uh, let's all say hello to Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, right. Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Oh, what a, what a wonderful pleasure. First and foremost, um, I'm honored to be able to have this opportunity to meet with so many of you. I get to spend some time with Bill and at times get to see Sue um, on campus and, and God, I miss having just the interaction and hope to meet several of you in, uh, you know, in the future face to face on campus. But in the meantime, thanks for having me. What an honor just hearing you speak in the history and the time um, uh, that you've been able to, to share just, you know, clearly, you know, a lot of history, a lot of culture, and then a lot of Bruin spirit. Um, I thank you for, for having me be a guest. So today I asked, I said, okay, what is it that, that I, I could do to be able to just bring a little color and energy to this, what I'm going to call the Rotary Bruin Bubble. We, we have our softball Bruin Bubble, and I think it's the best place in the world. But the Rotary Club, I want to be able to share a little bit with you. So I'm going to start by saying, giving you a little bit about my path. I was fortunate to be recruited to UCLA as a student athlete, and I made the biggest decision of my life when I was 18 and committed to UCLA, started in fall of 88 on, on campus. So was very fortunate, was able to play. Um, I played five years because I unfortunately had a, an injury, but was super fortunate to get on that College World Series stage as a player uh, all four year, all five times, but four years as a player. And we, I walked away with three national championship rings as a player. And a big part of that was all the people that I surrounded myself with. The coaches were outstanding. Lisa Fernandez, how many people, if you know who Lisa Fernandez is, let me see you put a thumb up in the air. Does anyone know? Yeah, you know our Lisa. So, so here's a little history. 
Lisa and I were a pitcher catcher combo. I was a catcher. She was my pitcher. I'm a year older than her. And we started playing together when we were 10 and 11 years old back in, in trouble and in club ball. So we had great experience in being able to be very, um, very fortunate, very successful, 12 and under, 14, 16, 18. And then we came to and, and had a career. Um, I, for, I unfortunately, as I shared, had a shoulder injury. So I, I retired sooner than I wanted. And Lisa went on to win three gold medals and as our most decorated softball athlete as far as having three gold medals um, for in the sport of softball. Um, she's currently my assistant coach on my staff. The first thing that I did when I took over as the head coach is I made sure Lisa was right there by my side. Um, but I never, I never stopped being a Bruin. I graduated in 93 and I started coaching a month after in 93. So I started coaching my teammates and here I am today, never left. So I'm in my 31st year of being a Bruin. So to say that I'm passionate about this Bruin family is an understatement. It is the best place in the world. I am loyal to this Bruin family. If you cut me open, I bleed blue and gold. And, and I think a big part of that is I'm so fortunate to be surrounded once again by so many wonderful people. I also want to share, I'm married and my husband, uh, Gerardo Perez, is a high school coach and a, and a health teacher here at my local high school. He played, he played ball at LMU and I have two children. Um, he played baseball at LMU and I have two children. My son, Michael Perez, is a sophomore. Well, he's going to be going into his third year as a sophomore for UCLA baseball. He plays for Coach Savage over there, over at JRS, which I'm super fortunate that he, was, he had opportunities to be able to uh, play collegiate ball and had a very successful career. Um, and my daughter is 15. She's a, she just unfortunately went through that you know, difficult freshman year, mostly at home, but she is a soccer player and has high hopes to be able to play at the collegiate level and hopefully potentially could be a Bruin playing for that from Amanda Cromwell, which would be great, but she'll, she'll find the best opportunity for her. Um, both my children have been raised in the Bruin bubble. My son had his first steps in Oklahoma City when he was nine months old, and now he's a sophomore or going into his third year um, here at UCLA, which is just wonderful. Both times that I was pregnant with both my children were national championship years, but we won't add those together because I'm not planning on having any of those for the future, but it, they were good karma during my, during my tenure, which was a lot of fun. So that's my Bruin family um, and I, my coaching staff. So I wanted to ask you all, what would be the best thing for me to be able to share with you? And Bill, maybe I'm going to ask this to you. Bill, do you think I should share a little bit about my program? Like to be able to share a little bit, you know, like a, you want me to share a PowerPoint? Do you want me to tell yes. stories? Do you want that's me to do PowerPoint. a video? What do you want me to do? Would be good. A PowerPoint? Yeah. Okay. So then, it can do I have the ability to share a screen? Uh, I think so. Let me see here. You got to talk to. Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay. Then let me see oh, here. There should be a little green. You know the green button. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go back here and. It's our Fox producer, so you're you're in good hands. Awesome. I love it. And can you see that? We still got your main yes, page. You can see it. A storm. And you see the big cloud, everybody? Nope. Not yet. Okay. Let me try that again. Yeah. There. Okay. It's coming up. There it is. There it yeah. is. You're on. Uh-huh. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take you through and skip through some slides, but and at the beginning of every season, um, I like to be able to bring the team together and be able to share about a big part of, of, of who we are and where we're going and how we're gonna get there. That's the, basic, the basics of it. So um, I wanna be able to share, let me see if it does this. Does it do it? So I wanted to share it. Now, does anybody here on this Zoom know who Don Slott is? He played baseball at UCLA, he's a baseball alum, and, he, and, 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 and with it, he had a 16 year major league career, um, but he played UCLA baseball, went on to have a major league career with, with several different, he was a Yankee, he was a pirate, he was a Detroit Tiger, he had played several years, but he is now my volunteer coach at UCLA. So it, I'm very honored to be able to have him back in, in the Bruin bubble, uh, very well known, he coached in major leagues also, but I got him on the softball end, and he's, he's the newest addition to my staff. Um, Lisa Fernandez, I didn't have slides, but he was the newest addition. Lisa Fernandez is my other assistant coach and Kirk Walker, who also was a student and an assistant here, went on to Oregon State and coached for 18 years and came back. 
Um, so my coaching staff are all Bruin, Bruin, Bruin bred. Uh, and we're the only staff in the country that can say that. Um, my freshman class, I have a, just to share, we, we, we had a very talented freshman class that was able to be named to, um, to a all-star team prior to them coming. The girl to the far right right here is Maya Brady and her, um, her mother it was, a, a, was a division one softball player and her, her uncle is Tom Brady. Um, so we're very fortunate to have some, some lineage, you know, some very talented lineage in, in the program. But Maya Brady is a, a phenom and was our freshman, was named freshman of the year for Division I softball this last 2020 season that got cut short. She is a phenomenal athlete, and I hope at some point you can come watch her play. Um, okay. Um, Dr. Parham was our sports psychologist on campus um, and actually for the university back in uh, – the 80s and 90s and um, I still work with him today he's a professor at LMU but he's a big part of our staff yeah, great great footage great no Bruins And I don't know, did that show? Did you guys see that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so it was an amazing experience for, for this team and a great accomplishment for us to be able to, to go in and bring that championship home. And I think a big part of that is just our experience that we've been able to build. We've had a, a successful program and the road is very difficult. I just wanna share, we play 56 games in the regular season and it starts in February and it goes through the end of May. And then we have a regional tournament where 64 teams get to go to the postseason. So we have 16 regional tournaments, and then it narrows down to eight super regionals where you have 16 of the top teams in the country in two team regional, super regionals. The top eight go to the World Series. And then from there, you play a tournament bracket. So you, the winner's bracket, loser's bracket, and it comes down to two teams for the championship. And then it becomes a two out of three for the championship. So all of these are double elimination and you can get into the 70s of playing how many games you play towards the end. So it's quite a road to be able to win a national championship and it, it's, a, it's a journey. Rachel Garcia got to be the spotlight as far as being able to be that pitcher for us. But there were other pitchers, Megan Faremo and, and um, Holly Acevedo that contributed in a big part to allow for Rachel to be able to be fresh and at her best. Our sport is unique. We have the ability, if you watch the tournament, softball players can pitch a lot longer than baseball pitchers. It is a different strategy. I think Coach Savage has uh, 17 pitchers on his staff and I have three. So it's a, it's a different sport in how, we, in how we use our pitchers. But Rachel Garcia um, had the ability to be, as Bill said, not only just an outstanding player for us, but the MVP of the tournament. And then I'll show, I'll go a little further, I believe, to be able to show um, a little bit more of what she did. Um, these were the goals that we set for our year, our year in 2019. Our goal was to be able to, we wanted 100% honor roll with 23 kids, but um, you know, that wasn't, that, or there was 21 kids, but we were, I was proud of them because we, we had 19 in fall, so almost everybody but a couple, and the, those couple were right below 3-0, so it was, they were pretty devastated. And in winter, when we're traveling a lot, we're all over the country, we had honor roll players, but in spring, that 14 players on honor roll were during the World Series. So that says a lot about the type of student athlete that I'm able to bring through that can compete at the highest level and still win championships. We were taking finals and then we'd go to the field and we'd compete. And so I'm recruiting a top 1% of a well-balanced athlete and also a student that, that represents UCLA. We accomplished all our goals, which was honor roll. We led the country and we led the, national, the tournament in batting average. We won the Pac-12, won the Natty. And the most important thing is the girls wanted to make sure we had fun and we had a blast. Um, so I just wanted to share just a couple things. There's only been three coaches in the history of our program. Sharon Backus started the program and she started it in the 70s and Sue Enquist was her first scholarship athlete. And so Sue Enquist played for Sharon and then took over and coached with Sharon as an assistant, became the co-head coach and then took over as the head coach in, uh, in 2000 and in, uh, when was that? 1997 is when Sue took over. And then I was fortunate to take over just, just shortly after in 2007 as a head coach. There's only been three of us. So I'm super honored to be able to carry on this tradition. And we are, we're fortunate because we are the winningest program in division one. Our philosophy is very simple. 
family comes first, school, we take pride in the degree and softball is the fun part. Um, and that's a big part of how we keep things straight is the people, school, and then softball is what we love to do. Our, our, when we talk about family, you know, we have great representation at our World Series, and this is what I call the Bruin Bubble. We have more alumni that graduate, go out in the real world and succeed, and they come back and they support. We have the, we have the largest alumni support um, in all of athletics that comes back and supports at our postseason. Um, we have upwards of, you know, 20 to, to up to 40 alumni that come through and they fly in and they fly out, and we have a great culture called the Bruin Bubble. You know, this is our postseason after after a super regional um, on the field. Very fortunate to be able to. I, I don't think you guys can see the yellow, so I, I apologize. But you know, a school. We're very fortunate to be able to have representation of of girls that that are getting honored on the honor roll, all academic team. We have great opp opportunities to be represented. Graduating is a big opportunity for us, and we celebrate that. That's that's why we're all here. Um, yeah, this is that you can't read the yellow. I'm sorry. We're the number one public institution. Okay, so this is something. Can you see this? I'm not sure if you can, but the bottom line is I want you all to know as Bruins that we are the first in so many things. We talk about this being the first and we all want to continue this tradition. We were the first championship in 80 NCAA championship in 82. We were the first to win one to win two and so on. We were the first as we are the winningest program. We were the first to win back-to-back -back championships in 84 and 85, and did it again in 88 and 89. We were the first to three-peat and only to three-peat in eight, and I, I got to be a part of that during my playing career. We were the first um, to four-time back-to-back in 2003 and 2004. And then we were, and then I want to be able to share this. The Honda Award, the Honda Award is like the Heisman in softball. Every sport, softball, volleyball, track, um, you name it, swimming, diving, gymnastics, everybody has a Honda Award winner at the end of their year. And we've been fortunate to be able to have several Honda Award winners um, for the sport of softball, you know, and, 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 and with it, you can't read the yellow here, but Natasha Watley, Lisa Fernandez, and Rachel Garcia was our most recent Honda, which they represent the best softball player in the country in all, of all Division One. So we've had three that have won that the that have represented as far as softball. Then they pick one Honda Cup winner, which is the best female athlete of all the Honda of the Honda Award winners. They pick one elite athlete, and three times it's been a UCLA softball athlete, which we're super proud of. One was Lisa Fernandez, the other one was Natasha Watley, and then Rachel Garcia. In this after this 2019 year was the Honda Cup winner, which is a huge accomplishment for just not only softball, but for UCLA. So we, we've won the, the, the Heisman in our sport and the Heisman of all female athletics three times. And, and la just last year, our Rachel Garcia was that Honda Cup winner. Um, so we're super proud of that. Um, as you know, we won in 2019. Here's the history of the Honda Cup, the best female athletes in the history of UCLA. So we've only had We've only had, as you can see here, five Honda Cup winners in the history of UCLA in the five decades. Annie Myers Drysdale was the first. Jackie Joyner Kersey was the second. Lisa Fernandez softball was the third. Natasha Watley was the fourth and Rachel Garcia. And that is the history of all, ath all athletics at UCLA, which is you can see how, how uh, you know, just decorated that is for, for Rachel, our Rachel Garcia in this generation to add to that historic list of athletes. Um, we had girls that are, uh, this was, this was actually old, but two of our girls, Megan Faremo and Kelly were junior national team. And now we have, uh, Rachel Garcia and Bubba Nichols that are on the Olympic team, as well as Ali Carta and our, our sh former shortstop Delaney Spalding. So we have two current Bruins and I don't know if you've been following us, but we went through a roller coaster. They won, they helped us win a national championship in 19. They were taken from us in fall for the Olympic opportunity. Everything unfortunately got side, they got pushed back. So they will be joining us back in 2021 in our collegiate year in 2021 for their last year, which is huge news. And then they'll go on to the Olympics in summer of 2021 if the Olympics, let's all pray, continues to happen. But it was huge news for us because they couldn't be with us in 2020, but they come back to us in 2021 um, for their senior year. So we celebrate that. Um, and then, you know, I wish that you, this, you, you can't really say, but the bottom line is 
This is the most important part of our program is our mission statement. And we're here to empower the competitive excellence of our student athletes. Through teaching, mentoring, and modeling, we guide them to be leaders in life. That's the bottom line of our program. And, and it's nowhere in here does it talk about championships, but I do have a wonderful opportunity to build these, these leaders in life. And that's what we're all about with UCLA softball is we, it is hard being a Bruin. We do get challenged. Expectations are high, but what you become is, is something that will continue. Um, I want them to continue to get recruited, what we call beyond the white lines. So with it, um, I'm gonna end it there and be able to say this. Um, with it, our program is very storied. I'm, I'm super honored to be surrounded by so many wonderful people. And I could go on and on for stories. I could write a book because I've been a part of UCLA um, in the 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010, and now we're, we're starting a new decade. I've had an alumni come and donate to, to create a wall of fame underneath our stadium that documents every Bruin that has ever worn the uniform um, and is carrying on that tradition is it's about people that represent. We have pillars that we call pillars of success that allow for our players to be recognized in what they're doing beyond the white lines in the community. And we represent all different, um, all different areas in, in society as far as the medical field and, and um, in law, in, in the education field, in professional sports, in um, communications. We have all of those and we're just very, very proud. So I just, I wanted to be able to share a little bit about our program so you could learn a little bit more about softball, but I also wanted to be able to just open it up and see if anyone had any questions, you know, for me, knowing that all of you know the history of UCLA, but what would you want to know specifically about UCLA softball? Does anybody have any questions for me? I do. What do you got? Kelly? Yes. My first uh, softball game we went to was when uh, um, Lisa Fernandez was pitching. Yep. And I was amazed. Of course, it's closer to the plate than the regular hard ball. Absolutely. The speed of which that ball went across the plate. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't hit that. The, and I used to play baseball. Yep, so what, what's the distance from the pitcher's mound to the distance? And also, what, what's the average speed of a, oh, of a good pitcher, softball pitcher? You know, <laughs> awesome. Tom, I appreciate the question. The, and the evolution of the sport, when, we, when Lisa and I played, the, the mound was at 40 feet. And now, and in the 90s, in the early 90s, it's, it moved back to 43 because the, the game was pitcher dominated. I mean, we had 0-0 ball games. Lisa Fernandez and I went head to head in high school and um, played an extra inning high school game right before we got to college. I bet you, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna get two guesses out there. Please unmute. Does any, anybody guess how many innings? The normal game is seven innings long, but we played in an extra inning ball game. Somebody throw out any guess. It's higher than seven, and it was a it was a CIF record of how many innings we went head to head with a zero zero ball game before a win. Somebody throw out a guess, please. Anybody? Seventeen. Twenty three. Seventeen. Twenty three. No. Seventeen. Not seventeen. Not twenty three. The answer was twenty nine innings. Oh. Ridiculous. <laughs> So we went and it was that stamina. I mean, <laughs> and it was a two day game, but the pitcher for was Lisa's high school team played for a small Catholic high school and Dee Dee Wyman and I played for um, Gar High School and both both Dee Dee and Lisa and I were all on the same travel team. And then we all eventually came to UCLA together. But please don't ask who won because Lisa Fernandez always wins. And I just want to do this sometimes, but 29 innings. So with it, the sport oh came. God. We changed from 40 feet because no one really wanted to watch a 29 inning 0 0 ball game. And here's another fact 101 strikeouts between the two of them that they threw in 29 innings. I mean, it was like epic numbers. Nobody wants to watch that, right? So they moved the mound back to 43. They changed the core, the hard, the, the core, the center of it. They made it harder. So we went from a white ball, they got a little, a little softer to a yellow ball. But to answer your question, 40 to 43, and the, but the speeds have never changed. The girls throw in the high 60s to 70s. So the reaction time in softball fast pitch is faster, greater, quicker than it is in Major League Baseball. Oh. Yeah, so it, it's a unique, and then we have different pitches that Major League Baseball is starting to get to, but um, very difficult sport. The cool thing is, and I don't know, I, not to get too technical with you all, but the, the bats, the bats that we used back in the day, the, the lengths are all the same still, 34 to 33 inches. But we swung, I swung a 29 ounce bat or a 30 ounce bat. So it was 34 
inches long and about 29 to 30 ounces, which was pretty heavy. This generation technology allows them to swing a 34 inch bat, same, but 20, 34, 24 ounces. So six ounces less, but the performance is greater because of the, the way the bats are built. So you see some really beautiful swings now that, that are very similar to golf, where back in the day, we were trying to get that head through, and, <laughs> you know, 29 ounces and the stronger survives. So the sport has evolved, has definitely evolved. The, the knowledge, the distance, the ball, the bats, which is why it's so exciting to watch on TV now, because anybody can really hit a home run. And it makes it, you got to watch it down to the last pitch because literally our sport is, is kind of crazy like that. If you watched our World Series, down to one out and the opposing girl from Oklahoma hit a home run. Really? But that's, it was great for TV. And then our team punched right back and we left them on the field. But our sport is, our sport is exciting because of that, Tom. We have definitely, we have a, we have a uniqueness. Rachel Garcia throws 70 miles an hour. Whoa. Absolutely. Yeah. So she's one of the hardest throwing and she has great movement. And Lisa Fernandez has helped develop her off speed. So the variance is 70 miles an hour is her, is her fastest and her changeup is about 50, 54. So you can see the speed difference there that, that looks oh my God. very difficult to hit. That's impressive. Why she's an Olympian. Absolutely. Yeah. What else? What other questions could I, could I answer? Hey, hi, this, hi, this is Philip Gabriel. Um, I was a huge fan back when, when, the, when the Whitney was there. You remember Whitney? Whitney um, Baker? Yeah. The oh, picture? Yes. She, yes. she actually she actually tutored my daughter. Oh, and I was I was really impressed with the, the coach and the girls when they 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 were very heavily involved in the community. Absolutely, they did a lot of coaching. They did and they they invited us to the game. I remember one time we went to the locker room, in the center you had that logo. Yeah, everyone kind of knew not to <laughs> go any further, on. not to step on that. Yeah, and we, no one stepped on it, and then we I found out like, we weren't supposed to step on it. So. so <laughs> So what, what Philip is saying is there's a UCLA script in our, we have a clubhouse with a big couch. And, if, and the one thing everybody says, when you come in, don't, you don't, no one steps on the four letters ever. And if you do, it's just 500 up downs. So that's all it is. So everyone tiptoes, you can tiptoe through, but no one steps on it. But Philip, we just celebrated this last year. We had the 2010 national championship team come back for their 10 year reunion. And, we, and Whitney came down. She's very successful working for Stryker. And she's very successful in, 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 the, in, the, um, in the business world. She's selling uh, medical products in the, in, in the medical field. She's doing very well. Yeah, she, she, she actually started working for a, for, for a pharmaceutical company. Yeah. All the girls that come through that program are heavily recruited by pharmaceutical, medical devices. Yeah. They love your girls. Well, I have, they I have girls. they're fortunate. You know, there's a, there's a breed of just work ethic and attention to detail. And, and we have some girls... Um, Stephanie LaRosa was one of our one of our greatest who's doing really, really well. And Brie Perez, my current shortstop, that is her passion. She wants to get into uh, into the medical, not necessarily pharmaceuticals, but uh, ph striker, selling, selling selling medical equipment and being in, in yeah. surgeries. Okay. Um, Thank you so much. Absolutely, absolutely. Is there are there any other questions? Yes, Kelly, I have a question. This is Ed yeah. Jackson. Well, actually, before my question, I just want to say your team is very exciting. And what I really like about them is that no matter what the score is, they never give up. I love it. And that's why they're champions, as you know. But I love it. It's very exciting. I have a question for you, Ed. As an ex-athlete, I don't know if it's appropriate, but I have a niece who, as a ninth grader last year, threw a no-hitter at Hamilton High. Yeah, Congrats. Unfortunately, this year, you know what happened, but... Um, I don't know. I think she's gone to your uh, summer camps you have. So I want to keep pushing her. Oh, what's her, what's her name? Do I need to take her name down and pay attention? Is that what you're Pilar telling me? Pilar Coda? Pilar? Yes. P-I-L-A-R? Yes. K-O-T-A or D-A? No, C. 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 Coda. D-A. And she's a, what year is she in school? Uh, she, this year, she's a sophomore, 10th grade. But as I said, as a ninth grader, and she was a little puny. Well, not puny, but, you know, a ninth grader. I don't know how, but she threw a no-hitter. But she didn't get a big head afterwards. But, uh, wow, that's exciting. I think I might Ed. have. Well, you tell, you tell Ed, you tell her to keep, and keep looking for the UCLA camps. I go to all the camps. And you better let her, you better make sure she says that Ed is my, Ed, you're, you're her, Uncle. Uncle, yeah. DJ. She's got to drop her. Well, 
It's all about who you know, and that's what she has to tell me on the Rotary Club. And I was you you make sure that you connect that. That's a big part of of uh, of her being able to help promote herself, and then being able to be a part um, of our camps would be a wonderful opportunity. Right now, we're in a dead period. We the NCAA has limited us from recruiting at all until July 31st. Well, basically August 1st, which is kind of devastating because June and July are heavy recruiting months, and we're not able to do anything at this point. So look for the future and have her hopefully come and attend some things. Okay, I will do. And, and thank at least you the, for all the excitement. Absolutely. And Ed, remind her, Lisa Fernandez is my pitching coach. So. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I, she would come and work with Lisa. That's the plan. Yes. Not a bad, not a bad opportunity, right? Oh, great idea. Thank <laughs> you, for, thank you, coach. Absolutely, absolutely. Who else had a question? I think, Michael, did you have a question? I see you, you have to unmute though. Uh-oh. I thought I did. There you now, are. Does that work? Absolutely. Okay. So first of all, you got to remember Ed's uh, played basketball at Washington State, so be careful. Oh. <laughs> all but, right. But my question was, uh, it seems to me pitchers get to pitch some, and I could be wrong, but some consecutive days, uh, a number of innings, compared to what I see, in, you know, men's baseball in college and what have you, what health or limitations are put on the, the ladies? Well, I think, you know, we, we're in a sport where the underhand motion is more natural than the, over, the overhead um, motion, which has allowed us to be able to have the ability to throw just what we call more bullets. Um, you know, baseball has rules from a very young age because of the very unnatural motion for them to have a pitch count. Um, we still keep a pitch count. We still limit opportunities. And then the good thing for us, as I was saying, it seemed like Rachel just threw the whole season, which just wasn't. It wasn't the case. We had opportunities to let other pitchers throw. Um, but pitch counts usually range. We try to keep the, the pitch count in a perfect world under the 140 mark per game. Um, we, ideally, it's a, under 120 in a good game. You're under 100. That's like really, that's a whole, that's a higher level pitcher. Um, we are going towards being able to have role, roles where people are starters and, and people are closers, similar to baseball, but we don't have um, the scholarships to be able to have, to carry that many pitchers. We still need to field position players as well. So it's very difficult to be able to have the depth where baseball has, they have to break up their scholarships differently. Um, but to get to your point, as far as pitch count, there isn't a pitch count rule. Um, it really comes down to it. We, we do a great job. The girls are very fine-tuned. They're in great shape. We travel masseuses. We travel people to take care of them. We do monitor their pitch count, We do, and we take good care of them and then put them in a position to be able to perform at their best, especially towards the end. So you saw Rachel. Um, her pitch count at, at the end um, was, was uh, closer to almost at the 500 over, a, um, over that, let's see, Thursday through Wednesday, so about a week. Um, but I think, and you know, it sounds like a lot, but there was a great deal of recovery after every ball game to be able to allow her to be at her best the next day. We, we just recover way faster than baseball because the motion is so much more, it, it's just natural as, as opposed to overhand. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. What other questions could, could I? I have a question. Are your players uh, that you uh, recruit, are they just all over the entire country or mostly in California or, or what? We, we, and this, this is the history of the program. As long as I've been a part, we have, we've had girls from Australia. We've had girls from Canada. We've had girls um, from, you know, mainly those, those are the two, the two countries, the other countries that we've recruited from. We've had girls from coast to coast, from, from Florida. There's a girl on our team right now that's from New Jersey. Um, you know, we have girls, we had girls from Florida, from Kansas, from Arizona, from Washington. Um, from all over the country. We've had, we've had girls. Right now, the girls are predominantly um, California girls. And like I said, I think New Jersey, Hawaii, we've had a girl from Hawaii right now. Um, so predominantly. And if you were to split it, we're fortunate. We get a lot of the Northern California, some of the best from Northern California. The hotbed of softball across the country is Southern California. There are more players in Southern California than any other place in the country. So Therefore, I recruit heavily from the hotbed and we're very fortunate to be UCLA. And a big part of our culture is having our Bruin pa our parents and their families be a part. So we are the, we are a big part of it. We're very fortunate in recruiting that a lot of people want to stay home and be a part of UCLA. Thank you. Yep. I have a question. Yep. Um, could you please 
give us some stories of Rachel Garcia, of what caused her to be the Honda uh, Cup Award? Yeah. You know what? I think that's a great question, Chris. You know, I'm going to start with this. She was having in high school. First of all, we started recruiting her when she was, we started watching her before she even started high school. And she was just, she was, she, she threw harder than most, you know, she had, she just had, she was stronger and threw harder, but didn't really have a great off speed. So she learned to develop that through her high school career. And by her senior year in high school, she was, she had gone from being just a strong girl to she developed into um, a pitcher that had great speed and an off speed. And she won the Gatorade player of the year, which was the best pitcher in high school softball in her senior year of high school. So she was having the best year, was in great shape, made the junior national team. So I was at her CIF game. She was an inning away from winning. She just won the Gatorade. She was gonna win a CIF championship. She was gonna go play USA softball and then start UCLA as a freshman all after this summer. And I was at her CIF game and she pitched the ball and she went down to the ground. And I thought, I was watching. And then she got back up and then she walked off the field and I thought it was just interesting. So she came back out the next inning and she pitched again and she went down to the ground again. And this is, you know, a couple months before she was starting her freshman year at UCLA. And I saw her dad pick her up off the ground and help her off the field. She tore her ACL and her meniscus. Right before she was going to ju her junior national team and two months before she was starting UCLA. And I thought, oh my goodness. So she started her UCLA career in a wheelchair in the rain. <sighs> as a freshman with a meniscus and ACL surgery. And, you know, to me, to get to the, to, to the, the point, Chris, is what she did after that is why she won the Honda. She won the Honda Cup because the girl was head down. You learn a lot, and this is my mantra. You know, it's not what happens. It's what you do next that really defines you, those defining moments. And the work ethic that she put in in the, in the training room, and, and she had to, she had to, the school part was so challenging. She was unmotivated and a lot of pain and living in the training room with no softball for her whole entire career. So she worked her way back. She got herself back to field. I still have video, like I was in tears when she first started to throw again because it was her left knee too. And we're like, you know, just very difficult. Come full circle to be able to get back and was got back to the College World Series stage and wasn't didn't have the experience to be able to and to be able to really pull that championship together. In 2018, there's no reason we didn't win. She just, we just didn't have that experience in 2018. Fast forward to 2019, you know, and the Honda people were, she had won the Honda in 2018. She was the best softball player in 18. And in 19, she won it again. But the fact that she took her team to the championship and, and the fashion that she did as a hitter, you saw her hit home runs for the win and you also saw her pitch. I mean, it, it became almost a no-brainer, her story of what she did. So from literally torn ACL meniscus, and then in this year, probably one of the big stories was her, one of her biggest supports was her grandfather, and he passed in the middle of 2019. So she was, she had his initials, and she was, so she was emotionally challenged, she was physically challenged, she stepped up to the plate. We talked to her every day about how she was managing her arm and with Lisa, and she literally put this team on her back and brought home a national championship for UCLA. Clearly, our team played great ball. We all hit and played great defense, but Rachel Garcia earned that Honda Cup, and I was so proud for her. And here's another story, Chris. So when we win the Honda in 2018, um, Peng Peng, Peng, our gymnastics, we all know Peng. Mm -hmm. She won the Honda as well. So Peng and Rachel we were, and Miss Val and I were at the Honda Awards. And we were, so it was, it's just a wonderful event. It's all the top female athletes in the country for every sport. It's just an amazing event. And all of them were up on the stage telling about their story. They were all seniors, except for Rachel. She was a, she was a sophomore in the room. Oh my and goodness. They, were, they were all talking about the lessons that they learned or the injuries or the failure that allowed them to really focus in their senior year. And I was sitting mm. right next to Rachel and I'm like, are you listening to this? These are all seniors mm -hmm. that took their entire career to get over the adversity to figure out how they ended their year with this Honda award. And, and she, you know, she was crying because she was like, you know, I, I should have, you know, in a sophomore year crying. I'm like, no, stop crying. You're a sophomore. Like, so listen mm -hmm. to these stories and hear this and let's do something about it. So for her to do it in her junior year 
was unbelievable, you know, but she learned, you know, she, we cried in 2018 when we lost. And in 2019, she was head down. And the, one of the cool stories is there's a locker room. We have the dugouts in the world series. And if you go back, back behind, there's locker rooms back in the back. And after every inning, Lisa Fernandez and Rachel would go back down into the locker rooms and Lisa would tell her, you are, you are not going to let this pitcher out pitch you. You are stronger. You are more prepared. You are tougher. It is a new year. It is your year. And she would mentally psych her up every inning to go back out there. And, yeah. and literally, she talked about that in the media afterwards because she had trained so hard and worked for that moment. And to have Lisa Fernandez in your back pocket telling you you can, I mean, she taught, it, it, was, it was a really unbelievable story of how it just came together offensively, defensively for her. So Chris, why, how she did it, her road was amazing. The experience that she gained was outstanding. And the fact that she's only a junior and she gets to now finish her senior tour with us in 21, uh, we can't wait. We can't wait to see how the whole story is going to end up. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, everybody, I just want to say that we should make a rotary outing to a softball game next year. Yeah. <laughs> Your adrenaline. And by the way, no disrespect to any of the girls, but I'm Team Whitney all the way. Oh. <laughs> I love I love Whitney. She was I amazing. love Whitney too. She's she's so. she's the sweetest, one of my favorites. Yeah, and then you know what? We'll 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 let you know what some of our opportunities are to shout out because the alumni come back to games, and that would be wonderful, Philip, if Whitney happened to be at a game. That'd be, be awesome. Yes. Be awesome. Yeah. Be awesome. What other? Is, do we, are there any other questions? Or Bill, how am I doing? You are doing absolutely <laughs> fantastic. I've I've enjoyed this more than any of our lunches or dinners. Oh, you're so, you're so sweet. Well, we're all, we're passionate Bruins. Um, does, any, does anyone, like, I'm gonna share with you, um, what I'm really proud of and I want you to watch is our Megan Faremo. So Megan is only a sophomore, but we all, so the NCAA allowed for all my players to regain eligibility. So all of them are coming back. So the freshmen are gonna have their freshman year again. The sophomores are gonna be sophomores and juniors will be juniors. And I didn't have really any seniors in this year with this team. So we lost Rachel Garcia, who I just shared was the best player in collegiate ball and female athlete. And we lost Bubba Nichols, who was my leadoff hitter and center fielder. My two All-Americans were taken for the Olympic team. Megan Faramo was just a sophomore. And she didn't, she had opportunities to play. She did play in the World Series, but she wasn't, you know, Rachel Garcia got the ball more than she did. So here she was in her sophomore year and we're defending our title and Rachel Garcia and Bubba are gone, and Megan Faremo, I need to tell you, put this team on her back as a sophomore, and we went into this 2020 season where everyone thought UCLA is done. They, they lost all their, they lost, I lost nine seniors plus Rachel and Bubba, and Megan Faremo put this team on our back, and we went out, went flew across the country to Florida and played on this ESPN tournament, played all ranked opponents and beat everybody. And she was, she was named the Pac-12 Pitcher of the Week uh, four of the five weekends that we played. She was named National Pitcher of the Week. She was named Pitcher of the Year in our, in our cut short season. And we were unanimous number one in the end of our 2020 season going oh. into Pac-12 with Megan Faramo as the pitcher who replaced Megan. I mean, who replaced Rachel. Rachel. So remember that name because now Rachel and Megan get to pair up. And, and we're going to be in a great position. And we brought in a freshman, Lexi, and we have another junior, Holly. But what Megan Framo did for UCLA softball when everyone thought we were out, oh, we were just building momentum. And the country was so upset. They're like, they're supposed to be down because Rachel and Bubba are gone. And instead, we were building momentum. So we're going to have a very talented team next year. A lot of young youth and a lot of veterans that have that have been to the world series so yes please come out and watch us and know that the ucla softball we're, we're looking to have a really exciting year which is why we're all praying football goes and everything goes so we can get back out there right i just want to say one more thing ucla doesn't reload that doesn't rebuild they reload 100 percent. we're recruiting <laughs> i like that yeah but um, well, I mean, you, you, you all tell me, I love that we're taking the time. It's, it's, you guys are, we're probably all used to zooming and seeing each other's faces, but I would love to see you and, and let you come and meet my girls and feel. The oh, energy. that'd be great. I, our girl, I'm so proud of them. They are so much more than softball players. They are, they're beautiful, powerful women that She's represent UCLA. Great. So proud. So I would love for you to be able to come up and you can jump into our clubhouse as long as nobody steps on the four letters. No, nope, <laughs> we don't want up downs for anyone. You can come on up, you can meet the girls and have that opportunity. And you know what the best part about our facility is? 
you can bring your, your kids and your grandkids because right after a game is over, we turn the field into a little bit of a sandlot and they can get out in the field and they can play and run the bases. And then we send them back to you all dirty. That's your job to clean them up afterwards. But there's popcorn and snacks and we have a little clubhouse. But there's a great family atmosphere up at, at, at Easton because I've been able to raise my kids as a coach. Sue has allowed me and Lisa has children too. So we have a very, very, very strong um, family atmosphere. In fact, I told our, our new AD, Martin Jarman, I was talking to him on the phone and, and he was saying, you know, I've got a four and a two and a six month. So I told him the same story. I said the clubhouse is a great diaper changing station. Come on up. You let them play in the dirt and send them home dirty. And he's planning on attending a lot of softball games too. So we'd love to have all of you up. Come see Easton Stadium. I bet you a bunch of you have never been there before. And Bill will rally you and get you up and show you the way up the back door. Anytime you want to come, you just send us a message and absolutely we'll make sure that you can get in and watch a ball game. Have some popcorn and a drink and you'll enjoy a great show. I promise you there's great energy in the stands at Easton Stadium. Kelly, Kelly, where, where is Easton Stadium? Right. At, so off of, if I were to say off of Sunset and Bellagio. Right. Okay. Okay. And then it's right across from lot 11. So the, the hitch suites are the, the back, the back gate of us is, is right there, but Bellagio and Sunset, if you were to turn on Bellagio to come onto campus from Sunset Boulevard, if you were to come onto campus, you would have to turn left to go to Sunset Rec. And then right to the right is lot 11. But right on that corner, if you actually look to the left, it's actually hidden. We have a great vines and beautiful walls. You can, it doesn't really stand out as a softball facility, but we have a beautiful entrance, Easton Stadium. And if you walk in, I would love for you to see just what we've built up there. There's, there's, there's great history and tradition with our championship. Kelly? Yeah. Kelly? Thank you. Yeah. Kelly? Yes, yes. I just wanted to say, uh, yeah. you guys hear me? Yeah. Kelly? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to thank thank you for talking to us, but also I want to tell all of you, you know, if you happen to be donors to UCLA, you might consider putting a few uh, dollars in for Aww. the softball team because you could always use a few extra dollars for lunch, and uh, <laughs> thank they you. would appreciate it. Kelly, just. A great presentation. Oh, thank thank you. Yes. You so thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, let's all put our okay fours up. You guys all we all know this, right? Fours up. Do you, do you know what the fours up stands for, Bruin? No. Okay, so there was a football player. I should know his name, but I don't. But you know, there's a lot of schools that have these little symbols of what yeah. they all do. And and he for football, when they announced it, he said UCLA doesn't have that. We all we have our eight clap, but there's no symbol. So he he created the four for the four letters, U-C-L-A, but for the eight clap, we did it twice. So we have fours up, which is the four letters, but an eight clap. So we literally will go fours up. So everyone do their fours up, go like this, go like this, yep. Now you know fours up is U-C-L-A and the eight clap. And then we have to finish with an eight clap, right? Just because right. we are, so everybody unmute. <laughs> It'll be super awkward and off count. Don't worry about it. Everyone just buy in. That's what we do, because we're Bruins. So everyone just put your hands in the air. We gotta have a little spirit fingers. Look at Don't these worry if we're not. Guys. Come yeah, on. <laughs> loud and proud. On three, ready? Ready and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two. two. Perfect sync. I love that. That was great teamwork right there. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Bill. I love you. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will definitely see you all on campus. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Can't wait to see you play. Okay. Bye. 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 Nancy, we'll have her at a luncheon when we get back yeah. to the faculty center. Yep, I'll bring her. Don't Ed, worry. Are you still here? Yeah. Uh, hello? Hi. 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 Yeah, that was outstanding. Yeah, that was great. It was very good. Contagious. Uh, we even almost got some USC people to do that eight clap. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, know, yeah, did you want to make an announcement to our meeting yeah. today? Well, thank you for coming. I think it was a very, very good meeting. Thank you, Bill. Yes, you're welcome. 
I'll have to and do a, an encore. Yes, definitely. Yes. That'll be a hey, Ed. Ed is, 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 Ed, is there a board meeting at, at 1.45 today? Actually, there is a board meeting, Diane, right? Yes, there is. Yes. 1.45. Is there, is, there, is there a different uh, link for that, or is it the same link as this? Nope, it's a different link. Oh. Diane, would, 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 <laughs> you mind send it, would you mind send that out again to me? Would you mind? Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay. Diane, I have to go and call in. Okay. I saw your message. You're good. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. All right. Thank you, everyone. Great meeting. Yep. A lot of fun. Good to Have see you good. all. Have a good week. Okay. Okay. Here we Thank go. You. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Yep. Bye, Nina. <laughs> Bye, Nina. <laughs> See you later, Richard. See you later, Richard. <laughs>